What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video and in this one I'm going to be talking about Tesla and also what's happening in the markets because the Fed just announced some huge things that are actually causing the market to reverse. Now before I break anything down, before I get into any more details, let me mention a couple of things real quick. Firstly, I'm not a financial planner, take none of this as financial advice whatsoever. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link down below and in the description. If you sign up for Weeble and deposit any amount of money, whether it's $1 or 100 bucks, you're guaranteed up to 12 free stocks. The offer ends in two weeks. So with that out of the way, let's get on with the video. So anyways, uh, looking at Tesla, guys, Tesla did end up turning red after it had a really nice pump up to my target level of 135 to 136. I actually highlighted this level and I was correct about Tesla getting the pump in the market, maybe continuing to push. But I also warned everyone on this channel for quite a while that there will likely be a very bearish reversal coming to the markets and that could drag Tesla down. Now, the thing about that claim is the fact that earnings is coming up for Tesla and Tesla has been pumping off of that. And that's part of the reason why Tesla has a lot more relative strength than before. Tesla is still holding up okay. I mean, we're only down about 1%, but my point is, you know, if the market keeps on tanking like this, Tesla will likely come down a bit too. So why is the market tanking? That's because the Fed made some very big announcements. The Fed announced, okay, we had Bullard and Mester making some big announcements. They said that they're going to be raising rates even more above 5%. They have to be more hawkish, and they have to try to be safe to bring down inflation by raising the federal funds rate even higher. They mentioned the fact that there's still lots of work to do. There's no like clear sign that inflation is actually near their target level just yet. And they also mentioned the fact that, or at least they implied that they're not going to like pivot anytime soon. Right? They, they, they implied that there's no plan for it anytime soon. We still have a lot of work to do. The Fed will likely pause in the next couple of months, but they have not confirmed any plans to do so as of right now. It seems more like they're going to continue raising rates, and it may be even higher than what the market was pricing in. That's why the market is now very uncertain and starting to actually tank. So what was interesting was... Uh, SPY was pushing up to the trend line. I mentioned this as resistance. Now, I my prediction was, okay, I initially thought that SPY would peak between 398 to 402. So far, we peaked at around 400, and then we got a big rejection off the trend line. Now, I did adjust this later on. I said maybe 402 to 406 is possible. It's kind of like a fake out, a fake breakout above the trend line before this thing comes down. It turns out it's not looking like that's going to happen. If you look at the trend, we have a very bearish looking candle compared to the last couple of weeks. This is one of the biggest red candles we've seen in a while, at least so far. And I don't really see the market continuing to rally very hard from this point. It looks more like we're going to see this thing kind of chop around and slowly downtrend before things potentially get worse as time goes on. I had mentioned on this channel the bearish divergence on SPY. I made that very clear. I also said the same thing about the QQQ, and now we're starting to see the bears come back. On top of that, on the NASDAQ, I was talking about this head and shoulders like formation. And I mentioned to you guys, yes, we had more room to push up a bit, but then I did see a big rejection. Did we push up? Yes. In the very beginning of the day, okay, we filled the gap. I believe we filled the gap. Yes, we came either came very close or we actually filled it. We basically filled the gap like I had predicted, and then we actually immediately got a big rejection. And I was thinking it would take a little bit longer, but hey, it actually came, and the technical indicators did not lie from the bearish divergences. We also got a bearish divergent, uh, divergence excuse me, on the NASDAQ. We got it on SPY, and now we're starting to see signs of a reversal. We're seeing the market slow down. I don't think we're going to crash immediately. I think we're going to just downtrend and chop a bit before we start to see a potential bigger drop going into like February and March, in my opinion. I just wanted to make that clear. Now the VIX, let's see the VIX starting to pop up. All right, this is not a big determiner of the market. I want to make that clear. It tends to be correlated with how the overall price action is on SPY and NASDAQ. They are the bigger determiners. But I just want to note that 
when we see this at such low levels, this thing tends to see these big bounces, hinting at the fact that the market was near a top. And that is what is happening. It actually came back above 20. And like I mentioned in my previous videos, I expected this thing to hit the mid to high 20s very soon. Let me just quickly go over a couple of things before I get on with Tesla. QQQ, my target was the gap fill at 285 level. We actually stopped at 284.6. I was a little bit, uh, I was a little short on this. Uh, it, it came a little short, but now it's starting to come down. Uh, the dollar index is currently at a low level, but as I mentioned, over the next couple of weeks, I expect this to start pumping. Uh, the 10-year treasury yield, very close to 34. It actually hit 33.75, but like I said, this thing could bounce very soon off news involving the debt ceiling, and that would be bearish for the market. And finally, I think that's basically what all I really have on that end. For Tesla, I just want to note, this thing was pretty green in the beginning of the day, and it turned red. It is showing some relative strength thanks to earnings and seeing some buyers come in. But right now, if the market continues to drop, SPY broke below 395 support. If we break below this 394 level, this thing could come down to fill its gap. SPY has a gap around like 390. That could actually end up getting filled if we see this bearish momentum continue. We are kind of oversold, so it could rebound just a little bit. But overall, the trend is very bearish looking very strong. And I don't expect a big rebound. I think it's going to be very minor. And if we get worse earnings, if we start to see the dead ceiling uh, news come out and the media goes crazy, this could actually lead to more selling pressure and we could see SPY come down very soon. I do believe a downtrend is yet to come. We actually have a double top like formation, not looking too good for the bulls. So I am more bearish than bullish. And I just want to note, AMC was green, now it turned red, it's down over 5%, Ape is red, Bed Bath & Beyond is red, Neo is red, the market is turning red, guys, the downtrend is most likely starting. For Tesla, um, it was very awesome to see this inverse head and shoulders like formation play out. Uh, we got a nice pump. Once again, my target level was that 135 to 136 level. If we broke above that, I could have seen it go as high as 140, but we did not actually break well above 136. We got stopped right here. That's where I predicted the top would be for today. And we could have held this top if the market held up. Okay, if SPY held up, if Apple held up, Tesla could have been much closer to like 136 when it closed. But the Fed came out. The Fed started talking. The Fed started being very hawkish. The whole market is coming down, getting selling pressure, and is dragging Tesla down. If the selling pressure continues, I'm going to watch these support levels. Even for today, make sure you watch 127 in case the market does bleed more and Tesla comes down. Then there's also the 125 zone I was mentioning. We also have this big gap down here around this 122 level. Be very careful there. There's another gap lower. I'm not too worried about that one, but make sure you watch these levels. If it breaks below 125.74, if we break below this area right here, then we have this gap right here, which Tesla could fill to the 122 level. So please be very cautious, guys. Right now, it looks like Tesla's starting to downtrend a bit with the market. It's holding up a lot better, but I just wanted to put this out there and warn you guys about everything as early as possible. Anyways, thank you for listening. I made this video a little bit shorter. I will release another video later today to go into more details about the Fed and etc. And I just want to note that these moves, the way SPY is moving now, the way NASDAQ was moving, you should have been prepared for this because I, I've been calling for a potential bearish reversal relatively soon. And it's, looks, it's looking like we're getting closer to it. Thank you for listening, guys. Please have a great rest of the day. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Tesla to the moon because the long-term future is still incredibly bright. And peace out.